Today on the DML News Podcast, the White House says, sorry, OJ, that you died, but says nothing about the victims. Catherine Herridge and other members of the press fighting for what would be called the Press Act. We've got information on new illegal alien stuff that's going to blow your mind. And the war that never seems to end here in the U.S. We'll get into more details about what that is. And it's all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word, and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is, is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and I thank you for joining me today. I want to start off by saying to those people who are watching on YouTube, who are watching on Facebook, who are listening on Apple Podcasts, you get the abbreviated part of the show because things that we're going to talk about today, videos that we're going to play, just do not fit to the policies of the social media and liberal gods. If you, God forbid, put something out that's true, if you put out something that they don't like, if it goes against their crazy ideology and their ridiculously backward narratives, they shut you down. They close you down. They demonetize you. They'll shut the video down all at once. We have been experiencing this at a level that is just unbelievable. So there's only one way to fight back. You have a choice. You can watch this show every single day in its entirety. Listen to it if you prefer in its entirety. Very simply, you download the DML News app for free. You then go over to tab five, interact. You hit it. It goes up to team DML memberships. You hit that. You come on over for as little as $2.50 a month, folks. You can stick it back to Facebook, stick it back to Google, the people who are trying to take you down and silence you on a daily basis, and you can help us continue to give you the truth. And our first story here should be a huge reason why you're going to step up and help us help you. Dennis, there is a thing called the, bi it's a bipartisan press act. I don't believe there's any bipartisanship in it at all, to be quite honest. It should be the good person versus bad person press act because the bad people in Washington, D.C., and they come from both sides of the aisle, do not want journalism, do not want reporting on any level. And it's getting harder for them to hide their corruption. It's getting harder for them to hide all the secrets that they want to keep because unlike the old days where you just had CBS, NBC, ABC, and then kind of Fox News – and you had the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal you know, coming out in a paper format. You got it the next day. You were getting your news late. They all owned the world in terms of how the narrative went out. But then this crazy little thing that Al Gore created called the Internet came out. And now people like you, people like me, people like Ryan, people who are all across this country doing the sort of journalism that's supposed to be done they ripple into that old age model to where the D.C. politicians could control the press, where the big business and the money and the advertisers could control the press. I can tell you right now, Pfizer comes to me and tries to give me $10 million to never talk about the vax again. I'm going to tell them to stick that, that $10 million up their ass, believe it or not. So with that being said, what's happening now is that good journalism is being crushed People are being stripped of their rights. They're being stripped of their notebooks and their laptops. All of their uh, contacts, their confidential contacts are being stripped away. They're being held in contempt. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yesterday in Washington, D.C., they had a hearing. Catherine Herridge, who I've always liked a lot, was a Fox News person, then moved over to CBS. She is testifying because for the last two years, she has been going up against the federal government because they want her contact list. They want to know who her confident, um, what sources. Say? the sources, who her confident sources are. And she says, I can't do that. The freedom of press, I am protected not to give that up. If I give that up, we'll never have, we will never have any sort of stories of truth being out there. We're going to play her video right here, and then I want to get what you have to say. Ryan, play Catherine Herridge at last two minutes. As you know, I was held in contempt of court for upholding the basic journalistic principle of maintaining the pledge of confidentiality to my sources. I have complete respect for the federal court and the judicial process, 
and I'm not here lit to litigate the case. It will play out before the appellate court in Washington, D.C. But the fact that I have been fighting in the courts for two years and that I am now facing potentially crippling fines of $800 a day to protect my reporting sources underscores the vital importance of the Press Act. When you go through major life events, as I have in recent weeks, losing your job, losing your company health insurance, having your reporting files seized by your former employer, and being held in contempt of court gives you clarity. The First Amendment, the protection of confidential sources, and a free press are my guiding principles. They are my North Star. When I was laid off in February, an incident reinforced in my mind the importance of protecting confidential sources. CBS News locked me out of the building and seized hundreds of pages of my reporting files, including confidential source information. Multiple sources said they were concerned that by working with me to expose government corruption and misconduct, they would be identified and exposed. I pushed back, and with the public support of my union, SAG-AFTRA, the records were returned. CBS's News' decision to receive my reporting records crossed a red line that I believe should never be crossed again by any media organization in the future. The litigation and being held in contempt have taken a toll on me and my career. This is not a battle you can fight alone. I am grateful for the support of fellow journalists and multiple First Amendment organizations. Kind of like you said, you know, she is one of the last bastions of really solid, well-rounded journalists. I mean, I've always been impressed by her. She's well-spoken, informative. Uh, and look, the fact that she is going through these lengths to protect her sources, I think any two-bit journalist at this point would have just given it up, you know, but, uh, and honestly, when she did go over to CBS, it was kind of like they won a golden nugget there. Maybe she thought she could turn things around, but clearly, you know, CBS does not answer to themselves, they answer to the White House and those in Congress. So, uh, you know, I'm not too surprised here that, you know, they, they kind of are trying to lock her up, not in terms of jail, but more so the uh, flexibility of being a real journalist. So it's good that she's at least here in Congress telling her side of the story because the fact that you know they changed the locks on her, they they stripped her of her thing uh, stuff. It's the one time I think a union actually came in and was a little bit helpful to this regard. Uh, I, I I feel for her and the fact that she's getting fined. What was it, eight hundred dollars a day? Eight hundred dollars a day. She stands to have to be fined because she will not give over her contacts. And what she says in her video, and I think this is the very important part, is that once it comes down to the person who is the source, the whistleblower, the person who's telling something confidence, once they see that there is no longer an avenue to give out the truth, the truth will stop being, des uh, you know, it will stop it being distributed all around. There's another person who had testified, people will probably be very familiar with, and that's Cheryl Atkinson. She's another journalist who basically went up against the establishment, had to deal with a whole bunch of crap. Uh, I don't want to get too long into her story, but I think what she shares in her two-minute clip here is so worth playing because it explains what you were just saying about how the government interacts with the media, and it shouldn't be the case. Ryan, play that video. Ms. Atkinson, what's your, what's your uh, experience? Well, I think it's interesting to hear people say, and I agree with this, that the government should not be intervening in news coverage, but in my experience at CBS, that happens every day. Members of committees, heads of committees, members of Congress and the White House call the Bureau in Washington, D.C., contacts that they have, uh, editors and managers up in New York to try to shape our coverage. Well, that, 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 that I don't find particularly objectionable as, as, as long as there is no uh, force or threat of force behind that. Do, do you find that to be the case? Or, I don't know what was said. I just know they called. There's no, no physical force threatened, but there certainly is a great deal of pressure, you know, weighing on the networks in terms of their coverage. Well, uh, uh, what about uh, government acts directly? Uh, have you encountered such intimidation yourself directly from the government, or is that all, all kind of channeled through your employers? Well, I felt a great deal of pressure channeled through my employers. You know, we, I was told that certain stories weren't going to air because we were getting phone calls, and even though there was nothing wrong with the stories, let's just let it rest for a day, let's pick it up another time. 
they're really mad this time. And there was no objection over the content of the story or the facts. It was they just, as I was told, they just didn't like it or it was a story that they felt was unfavorable at times. Well, I mean, if they, if they were if they were offering uh, additional facts that might have been ignored, if they were offering different opinions, uh, that, that's freedom of speech. But if behind those suggestions was the, the threat of force, that's a completely different matter. Do you, do you agree? Well, yeah, my position was when political officials call into the newsroom, there should be a policy where we tell them if they object to something or have a factual uh, issue that they should put it in writing and send it in. But there are these extensive conversations that go on behind the scenes. I only know about a few of them, um, a relative few of them. I'm sure they happen in other scenarios as well. Thank you. Ms. Atkinson, <clears throat> should I read your testimony or hear your testimony to say that the Press Act would not be sufficient? I think it's a global problem that has to do with sending a message to a message of oversight to the intelligence agencies that we know have for decades violated rights and, and po made policies that are contrary to Constitution and so on. I don't think there has been an effort they think is serious. I feel like the intelligence agencies feel like they're running the committees here rather than the committees conducting oversight of them and that there needs to be something they understand that they would be held accountable when they do things. And I don't know what that looks like in practice, but I don't think the law is in that. Look, the press was created sort of as the fourth estate. The idea was that the press would keep politicians accountable. It was the one thing that would keep the politician from getting drunk on his or her own power. Well, what's happened over the course of time, and there was nobody better than this than Obama, is that the White House and the politicians get in bed with these networks. They promise them the breaking news. They promise them access to information, access to the president in exchange for friendly press. I did a movie going back a while ago, back in my days of Fox News, called We Ride to D.C., and there was a section in that where I actually showed Barack Obama's face and the list of people in his administration who he pulled in from the liberal media. The list is so freaking long. David Oxelrod is one of them. So think about this. He goes, Obama goes to David Oxford and says, hey, can you go back to your old friends over there? Make sure we get a good article about Obamacare. Make sure we get favorable our article about, uh, you know, Fast and Furious and all the different little things. When, when it comes to Benghazi, hey, let's circle up the press and make sure that we got everybody getting behind us on this whole thing that this uh, Benghazi thing happened because of a uh, YouTube video about Allah. When you've got the press compromised in the way that Atkinson just said, your democracy, your republic will crumble because the only way that people can make a really informed vote or an informed decision about anything is if they are indeed informed with the truth. Now, a program like ours, we give out the information, we play the videos, we play the statistics, and then we give our two cents on it, which is a very important part of it all. But imagine if all of a sudden we can't give the facts or our opinions were shut down because we're going to lose money or we're shut down because we're having threats of being in contempt. Now what happens is the person on the other side has no idea about really what's going on. They have no idea who they can trust. And that is exactly what a dictatorship wants. If you look at all the different great nations that have crumbled along the course of time, it has always started with the people not trusting the government. And if you're not getting information, and it's not true information, if it's tainted, like CBS is tainting their information, I'm sure, when it comes to the liberal presidents, how is it that anybody is supposed to trust anything in this country? I don't know how you do. I mean, it, it's beyond just even a liberal conservative divide. It's whether information is free or suppressive. Uh, you know, we haven't even touched this story, but um, earlier this week, uh, Yuri Berliner from NPR, you know, he came out and said there are 87 editorial positions at NPR. All those editors are registered Democrats. There are zero Republicans. Like it is obvious that there is a tuned message that they're going for here where 
it doesn't matter if the, you want the difference of opinion or voice, you're not going to be able to say it. You know, it's essentially state run media and, and they just without the label, you know. So um, I hope that and Yuri Berliner is a liberal. So that's that that's, I think, a greater point here. I'm sure maybe Catherine Harris or Cheryl Atkinson may have views that don't align with ours. But this is more about being able to speak on those views, being able to report on, you know, views that are contradictory to the message that, you know, the White House or in some cases, Congress are trying to put out. At the end of the day, there needs to be separations. If there are not separations, then it becomes collusion. It's that simple. I remember, uh, I, I love telling old stories. I remember uh, when I was on Fox News every week, Megyn Kelly had me on uh, going back. I was covering a story for her about the Bundy Ranch. And I had wound up stepping in front of guns, both the M16s of the feds and the AR15s for the people who were supporting the Bundys. And, and uh, proudly, I think I saved a bloodbath that day. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to be all heroic. My, my initial thing was to save myself, okay? How do we get out of this? We've got to get these guns down. And I was the one guy from New York who was playing with no emotion in the game other than I don't want to get shot. And, and it, was a good, it, it was a good resolution, if you will. Well... Along the way, Harry Reid, who is now deceased, was a senator at the time, very powerful, probably the most powerful senator in all of Washington, D.C., and a radical liberal, uh, liberal at that. And Barack Obama is obviously the president at the time. Well, I was on the uh, Megyn Kelly show, and they played a clip of Harry Reid saying that all of the people who were there on the Bundy side were domestic terrorists. Now... There were definitely a couple of people on the Bundy side that were not playing with a full deck. I could tell you that right away. But there were other people there, other ranchers, cattle ranchers, who just felt as if they were always being stripped of their freedoms and their rights from the federal government. These people were not domestic terrorists. These were real, good, red-blooded Americans, God-fearing men and women. And so I turned around and said, no, the real domestic terrorist is Harry Reid for saying something like that, for coming down on these people like that. Well, would you know it that Harry Reid's office called Megyn Kelly and said that they demanded I went back on television and apologized for Harry Reid, to Harry Reid to do that. And they were putting pressure on Megyn Kelly and Fox News. And I thought for a moment, because I wasn't going to do that, I, I thought for a moment, well, am I... Am I going to lose my position here at Fox News in terms of being like, you know, a, an unpaid contributor? And they came back and said, no, we don't, we're not going to get pushed around. Now, with that being said, I can tell you that Fox News back in 2015, when I was thinking about running for office, Roger Ailes was getting phone calls from the GOP telling them not to put me on television because they did not want me in the game. So it works both ways. It's not just the liberals working with the liberal media. It is the GOP working with Fox News. And then I'll also tell you that when I was at Newsmax, I could not put certain people on my show who wrote negative books about the Clintons, both Hillary and Bill. And during that time period, if you remember correctly, Donald J. Trump had like 30 women coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, he touched me when I was 12. Oh, he touched me on an airplane. Oh, he touched me. And, did and he's like, who the hell are these people? I don't even know who they are. They're coming out of the woodwork. That was okay to cover. But when I wanted to go back and cover people who said that they were either raped or had a friend who was raped or they were stolen from or they, they were talking about anything with the Clintons, I always got shut down every single time. My guests were rejected. And I'm like, wait a second. Why is my guests being rejected? They're, all, they're on Fox. They're on all the other different radio shows. Why aren't we having them here on Newsmax? I'm the number one show. And it wound up being that when I tied back and I, I don't have anything that ties these two for, de uh, for definite, it's my opinion on this. But I got an email back that said, basically, uh, there's no reason to go look backwards. Let's just, there's, there's enough here to look forward. And then I found out that the uh, CEO of Newsmax is a million dollar donor to the Clinton Foundation. Oh, gee, I wonder how that all happens. So there's no doubt that there is dirtiness that's happening. And when you look at Facebook and you look at Twitter and you look at, all, at Google and you look at Apple, think about all the different things we know to be true. The Hunter Biden laptop, for example, right? New York, uh, New York Post puts that out. Twitter takes it down because it has all the pressure from Washington, D.C. and all the elitists and all the alphabet agencies. Okay, how does that work? Facebook, 
Facebook now will make it so this way our videos don't get out there because they're 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 squashing the positive Trump message. I can literally, Dennis, you've seen this on my Facebook page. I can literally write on Facebook, "Hey, it's Friday. What are you guys doing?" And I will get three thousand messages. If I turn around and say a new statement from Trump, I'll get three. You tell me how a, a Trump-following, MAGA-supporting, Republican conservative base that follows me is more interested in commenting about what I'm doing this Friday than what it is that Trump just said about illegal immigration. Obviously, there is a bias, and this bill will not go far enough to change it. It will protect, if it passes, people from being exposed that's if Biden was to actually even sign it and not veto it, because clearly he doesn't want the truth to be told. And that's why it is that this country is crumbling, because people don't trust anything. Last word to you, and then we've got to move on to the private stuff, because what we're talking about next won't fly on these corrupt networks. Look, yeah, I mean, it's it comes down to censorship, and then even those that aren't being censored, you know, controlled opposition in a way. So... Uh, Hopefully, there's more of a um, coming out of reporters like Catherine Herridge that are, you know, being kind of uh, tapered down to that extent, uh, and and hopefully their voices are heard. And to your point, I mean, this bill is probably only going to go so far, uh, but now the pressure's on Biden to actually sign it. Well, uh, it will never happen. <laughs> you know that, and I know that. So we're just going to have to keep on rolling with the punches. And that's why, one more time, I ask you before we leave, if you're watching this on Facebook, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, I can't give you the full show. And I'll tell you why, because here's what we're going to discuss and show you. We are going to discuss three different stories about illegal immigration, one about an Afghan terrorist, one about a, uh, a human smuggler. And if I put that, on these networks that I've just mentioned, they will tell me that it is somehow bad speech, that it's negatory, it's, it's derogatory, or whatever. Maybe. What are you talking about? This is what's happening in our country. We got people dying of drugs. We got people dying. I mean, terrorists want to start to rip this country apart. We just had death to America, death to death to Israel, chanted in in Michigan. The government, the governor, Whitman, Whitmore, doesn't say a damn thing. Toshiba Alib, the representative out of that very district, doesn't say a thing, doesn't condemn it at all. I mean, I play those kind of things. They don't like that. They don't like it when we tell the truth. Another thing we're talking about, we're going to talk about O.J. Simpson and how it is that everybody is playing the race card on this. I mean, the AP actually put out a story that said O.J.'s American dream was cut short because of the trial of the century. No, it wasn't. It was cut short because he was accused of murdering two people, one of them being his wife. It's amazing how they will do everything they can. So we're going to talk about race and racism and how it all gets twisted. We're going to play you videos of, of a couple of white kids getting pummeled in school. It's stuff that they're saying at CNN. It's amazing what you can find if you look for far enough. And then we are going to play a testimony given by a woman at a school board meeting reading from a book that is there for little kids. I, I mean, listen, I'm no prude, but oh my God, the things that they're putting in front of our kids when you hear this video is earth shattering. So if you want to come over and see the rest of it, you want to be with us every single day, plus get so much more that I'm not going to go into right now. You can see it when you go. Download the DML News app for free from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Go to tab five, which is the Interact tab. Hit it, the Interact tab. Then at the top says Team DML Memberships. Click it. Come on over. Sign up. Don't have a smartphone. Don't do apps. Well, then just use your desktop or your laptop or your tablet and go to Team dml.com team dml.com and sign up the same way we have live chat you'll be with thousands of other people who are like-minded like you and there's so many other benefits that we give you and it's all listed for you when you check it out so if you're watching on youtube if you're watching on facebook if you're listening on apple Podcasts, we wish you a great weekend now we convert over to team dml get the dennis michael lynch podcast every day by subscribing on apple Podcasts or spotify and download the DML News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and Team DML.